Yo, welcome Fronies. It's finally here. Update 1.8. That's the update we've all been speaking about so much on stream where all the questions were coming from. And we have good news. <clears throat> The two star dungeons are exactly being implemented the way we have talked about it in the preparation video. So we are good here. And of course, in the next upcoming days, you will get in detailed guides on all of the dungeons and how to do them the fastest. I did not want to pre-record the stuff in Korea. I actually wanted to wait to um, do it on global. So in case there's a difference between Korea and global, we are not having outdated guides right away. A new system that they also introduced with that patch that came off a surprise, I think. I never read about it or got it from any interview. Is a student and mentor system, basically. They are calling it Sprouts and Sages. So the Sage is the guy that is trying to mentor the Sprout. And um, it basically works the way that you have an experienced mentor. They are trying to make sure that the person is experienced by giving a bunch of requirements that it takes to actually be a Sage. And then you get someone that is like um, low level, has maybe not that much experience and you're trying to help him on their journey. I think this is a really good task. Because of course my whole channel is about doing guides, right? So I obviously like doing that. But I think that the game is bad at explaining all the mechanics that are in the game, everything. And if you have like someone to talk to to maybe get like one of the questions off, no? I think that's amazing. Of course, as always, just drop it in the comments. I will answer everything in less than 24 hours. But specifically for that system, on my Discord that you will find in the description, I have made a Sage Request channel here. If you meet the requirements and you want to apply as a Sprout, you can just pop it here. Just use your brain as some common sense and put some information on there so I know who you are, so I can make a decision. And of course, I do want to provide like a real value. So at the moment, I will only accept crossbow dagger players as I am not able to speak on behalf of other classes um, as well as on expo dagger. And I want the quality to be good. So far, this is actually not linked to any rewards as far as I'm aware of. The only thing that you can get is basically like a like at the end. Um, but even though there's no rewards, I still want to do it. Then now we are to the point where probably all the expo daggers that are watching my channel are waiting for like crazy. We finally got the weapon balance patch that I've been talking about. We're going to go over all the weapons, but we're going to start with that one right here because this is what everyone wants to read. The devoted shield is finally changed. It is not based on weakening anymore. Our Queen Bellendir crossbow will not feel useless anymore. Like uh, basically all of our problems for crossbow dagger are solved with the longbow change. Not with our skill changes, with the longbow change. Since the shield is not based on weakening anymore, that means whenever they are going below 30 health the shield will last three seconds so obviously what you do you proc the shield you save your cooldowns while the shield is active because the shield can go up to 6500 so you just wait to, for the shield to tick down and then you continue your burst and the shield has a 60 second cooldown just that patch change here in itself already makes me really happy but now let's go over all the other weapons as well so for sword and shield the changes are not that major they are getting a buff by being able to reduce the cooldown for the Stalbert Bastion right here. Um, Greatsword is also getting buffs um, by reducing the cooldown, Blood Devotion by 15 seconds. For the Devoted Shield, we're now having a skill range um, being shown. That's just, I would call it like a UI fix. Then we are having a nerf for the Greatsword. The Precision Dash um, now counts as a Fury attack, which also means it can be blocked. Sorry to interrupt, but short self-promotion is needed. Currently, 91.2% of the people watching the videos are not subscribed to the channel. So let's make a deal. If you learn something new in this video, you have to subscribe. And it's supposed to make it harder for great swords to pull off their CC chain combo. And Vital Force also just a two-tip change about the health limit. Then for Dagger, the first thing is already interesting. Um, because we had that question quite a lot of why... I am not leveling that skill at all. And I said in Korea, the heal 
was not significant enough to actually make a difference in a fight. And they have said now that they are improving the heal. So that means I will level it up and test that skill in game properly again. And overall, since we are having changes to the balance for dagger, crossbow and bow, thanks God, I will of course update my crossbow dagger guide in the next two or three days. I want to take some time first to test everything in game so I know that that is the new best setup and then I will release the updated crossbow dagger guide of course. So here we definitely want to keep our eye open if that skill heal is significant or not. Then we're having frenzied sword dance giving the ability to increase damage in an area of three meters. It only costs three skill specialization points and it increases 60% of base damage. This to me looks like a buff especially for like a great sword to dagger that is maybe wants to AOE nuke in a a, um, in a large scale PvP event. And I think this is where they want to push the Great Sword Dagger. So he has like one AoE attack that is like, like really big. And then afterwards he just goes down similar to if you would play a full spin to win build on a crossbow dagger. The knife throwing increased the debuff applied um, for the incoming recovery effects I think makes perfectly sense because um, healing is still really strong in the game and you need something to counter it. Now they have um, one change that's really interesting for the crossbow. So selfless diffusion has the remove CC specialization removed. It's not there anymore. It got put to mana exchange. That I'm not saying it's like a buff or a nerf. I would say it's neither. It's neutral because if it is removed here, that means you will not need to hold your biggest damage buff. So you have the option to remove CC because this is what happens often. Like if you use it early, you will get CC chain. You have no option. So you have to hold your biggest damage buff and you cannot use it as an engage. Now, since that is on mana exchange, you do not have to hold on to it anymore. You can use damage when you want. You can use CC removal when you want. But if you've not been running mana exchange on your bar at the moment, you will have to forfeit one skill now. And I was actually a fan, especially like in a arena to not run mana exchange and run like um, knife throwing or run the ability to prone an enemy so this will definitely shake up some some skill builds right here because not taking the cc removal i don't know if that's possible if you're playing crossbow dagger to actually be beneficial i think it's a must have and that will shake up some builds then for the explosive trap they are increasing the duration not really i don't know i don't think that's that important because um, you don't want your traps to lay around a long time. You want your traps to be um, laid, triggered, you get the CC with the specialization. If you're not taking that, it's, I don't know, I feel like almost useless. And then you can follow up on that CC. So I don't know what the increased duration is used for. Then multi-shot is now another way to increase nimble leap cooldown by 15 seconds, which also means that um, you will have another quick fire because you can then with nimble leap reset quick fire. So we're having another reset chain with multi-shot will also shake up some builds maybe there because there is some DPS potential. But I can already reveal that our large scale build will most likely um, not change because we're already running multi-shot in there as a poison spreader anyways. Then I've just said previously that heals are pretty strong and they're trying to counteract that a little bit, especially they're trying to lure, to nerf longbow wand and they're doing this by giving a shared cooldown for healing touch and swift healing. They've increased the stacks that you can remove with that, that's fine. And the shield we've already talked about. Then for the staff, serial fire bombs, now has an option to reduce the healing, which is nice to counteract the high heal, like I just said. And then the next ones here, I think they're not that crazy important. I want to focus on uh, um, something that we've been talking about a lot regarding runes, that the um, shield block penetration chance that you're getting from runes are extremely essential to balance out the tank. So they will need to introduce that stat more often and from various sources or just release runes with the stats, right? And I think they're already starting now to do that because they have added here to the judgment lighting the ability now to debuff shield block chance by 30%. So that is basically shield block penetration chance just with a different wording from the runes. And there's actually more changes as well, especially with the wand, where the wand now with time for punishment has the ability to debuff for shield block chance. And Kami case is also adjusted to ignore shield block chance. So I think those are the first changes that we're going to see in that regards. They're going to monitor this. And I think they're going to introduce more of those stats to reduce the tankiness of the tanks over time.
and maybe that will solve the whole issue of tanks of liberty. Then we're also having new rift stones and boon stones introduced. Those are inter-server and it is not a zerg fest or whatever. It's guild versus guild, so you can really show in a fair environment who's the best PvP guild and you will be able to earn Lucent that way based on the taxes from the auction house. So also giving a new option to free-to-play players to earn Lucent. But also on the other hand, it's making guilds even more important. Like I've said it already enough, this is a guild game. If you are a solo player, you will be behind a lot. What I am missing in that patch is actually the fact that the random matchmaking that they're talking about here is not random and that people can cancel at any time to select the dungeons that they want to get the random reward while not playing random. And I think they really need to adjust this. Um, one good news for the PvE players, they have finally managed to adjust the portals. So if there is a peace boss, you can actually go and do it. And in the dungeon, like for example, Junobot, Nurma, whatever, you cannot be killed. And you can, as a PvE player, now enjoy your PvE experience without being forced into PvP. I would say this is the roundup. If you still have any questions, just let me know in the comments. As always, we will try to answer everything in less than 24 hours. Cheers, guys.